Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to use the transform CSS property with the skew value in order to create a design element in the footer of my web page. I'm getting this idea from the Zipcar site, and you can see in the header section they have this slanted green portion, which is part of this large green block header. I want to do kind of the same thing, but in the opposite. Whereas they have this slanted portion at the bottom of the header, I want to create mine at the top of the footer, slanting upward to the right. It's going to be pretty easy to do. Um, this page doesn't have much on it. It's got a header section and it's got a footer section, and that's what I'm going to be messing with here. However, I don't really need to work in the actual body of the page. Instead, all my work is going to be done in the styling. Let me zoom in on this another shade. So inside of my styles, I'm going to take my footer, colon, colon, before. Basically, I'm creating a pseudo element. I'm creating a fake element to go into my web page. And let's see, I'm going to do content, empty set of quotes, display block. So I'm creating a block element. Now, this is going to be ultimately within my footer section. So that we can visualize it, I'm going to give it a width of 80% and a height of 150 pixels. Also going to give it a background color. Let's see, how about HSLA, Hue Saturation Light Alpha, will be 20, 100%, 50%, 0.6. There we go, that should create a nice large orange uh, rectangle right on there. Okay, so now we can clearly see where that block is. Now I'm not done with the width yet, but before we go too much further, let's actually see what skew can do to it. So I can do the transform property with the skew value. Now notice there's several options for skew. There's skew, which is gonna require an X and a Y value, or I could just do skew X or just do skew Y. I really just want Y, but I'm gonna do the skew and I'll start off with 10 degrees X, comma, zero degrees Y, so we can see what that does. And it looks like the top left corner and the bottom right corner are being pulled on the horizontal axis, hence the X. All right, well, that makes sense. Now I'm going to change this out to zero degrees X and 10 degrees Y. And now we'll see that the top left corner and the bottom right corner are being pulled on the vertical axis, the Y. That's exactly what I want. Well, it's close to what I want. I want them to swap the other way because I want the right side to be higher than the left side. So instead of 10 degrees, I'll do negative 10 degrees. And now, refresh, there we go. So now my right edge is kind of where I want. I want it to going upward to the right. Okay, let's get a little bit more specific here. What if instead of a width of 80%, I had a width of 100%? Makes it a bit wider. Now I'm going to position this pseudo element within my footer. My footer, by the way, already has a position property applied. It's position relative. And for my pseudo element, I'm going to do position absolute top zero pixels, left zero pixels. Now, this pseudo element, this slanted skewed block, is being twisted using the center as its point of origin. I'm going to change that, though, with transform origin. Now, by default, it's set to center, so that's what it is right now. But instead, I'm going to change it over to transform origin left. That means I'm twisting from this left point, and that's actually getting pretty good to where I want it to be. Notice that the very left edge of my, or the top left corner of my skewed box is right there, but I don't want to be able to see any of this gap. That's not going to look good for my effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce some of this skewness. Instead of negative 10 degrees, what if I did negative 5? Hmm, that's actually pretty good. However, what if my browser is much wider? How's that going to look? See, if I go too wide, I start to see a gap in there, and I don't want to see that gap. So I'm going to change this out to negative 3 degrees. How does that look? That's looking better. In fact, I could probably do 4. Now, if my browser was super wide, it would start to see that gap in there. So I might go back to 3. Now, the other thing we could do is we could set a max width on the overall page container, or we could have a media query for extra wide monitors and things like that. I'm not too worried about it. However, I think I'll still dial this back down to negative 3 degrees. Now, our illusion is almost complete. However, I want this block to be behind 
my footer, not on top of it like it is now. So what I'm going to do is a z index of negative 1. There we go. And that'll put it behind there. Excellent. And now if my color matched the color of the footer, the illusion would look super. So I'm going to take out this HSLA color. That was temporary. And instead I'm going to put in var color. I think it's background 2. I think that's the variable which represents the color of my footer. There we go. Perfect. So now that slanted skewed block matches my footer and that illusion is complete and if this browser is wider great now I've got that angled footer now of course I could adjust the content in here too to make it look like it's fitting into the space so it's a little bit less tacked on I'll try that real quick so if I went to my footer and then paragraph first child I happen to know these are paragraphs right here I could do something like position relative top negative 40 pixels. How does that look? Doesn't look good at all, especially if I don't spell the word position right. There we go. Yeah, so that's moved up a little bit higher so we can say, okay, maybe that'll look a little bit cooler. 40 pixels is probably a little too dramatic and maybe I should have used something like a margin top, but I think you'll get the idea that now we could have elements kind of take in that space and it makes that illusion a little bit more similar to what we have here. Okay, so that was pretty easy. How did we create this effect? Well, we created a pseudo element to go inside of the footer, inside of the parent block, and then transform with skew, transform origin to help us control where that thing where that element is going to skew and then position absolute within a relatively positioned parent container excellent so now you can start making your slanted elements on block elements take care